So the two hormones that are most commonly prescribed for HRT are estrogen and progesterone. Estrogen replaces the hormone that you normally is released by the ovary in your reproductive years. And that's the one that relieves all the symptoms of the menopause. And it's the estrogen that also gives the bone protection and some cardiovascular protection. The progesterone is only there to protect the endometrium. So that's the lining of the womb. So women that don't have a uterus don't need progesterone. It's only women that have a uterus that need progesterone. And the other hormone that we sometimes prescribe is testosterone, which the indication for that is low libido or low sex drive. But we usually only add that in if estrogen isn't having a full effect. So the, the main reason we prescribe HRT is for symptom relief. So women that come to us with um, flushes, sweats, mood swings, memory loss, joint pain, those are the most common symptoms of the menopause. And a, a lot of people talk about brain fog, so that's sort of cognitive issues. Estrogen can help with those. It may not relieve everything, but actually it's very, it's probably the best thing we have for relieving flushes and sweats. And it also, there's good evidence that it helps protect your bones. So those are sort of the two th main indications for using it. Women that have a um, sort of premature vein insufficiency, which is a very early menopause, really benefit from that because otherwise they may not even reach their peak bone density. So those are the main thing, reasons for it. It's cardiovascularly protective if it's started around the time of the natural menopause. So that's a sort of added bonus, but it's not usually the main indication for starting HRT, but it's certainly something that we think about and we would advise patients on when we start it. So the estrogen, the night can be taken lots of different ways. The easiest way to take it probably is by mouth. So a tablet and often estrogen comes in pre-packed formula as an estrogen only tablet, or if you're taking combined HRT, it might be combined with progesterone, or you can have estrogen only tablets for half the month and progesterone and estrogen tablets for the other half of the month to give you a bleed. So that's one way of taking it. Another way, which has become more popular now, is transdermally, so in a gel, a spray, um, or patch. Um, those are the most common ways of taking it. For women that none of that really works for we so in some centers we use implants which just going onto the skin uh, you give a little bit of local anesthetic we make a small cut and put a little pellet onto the skin and that lasts for around six months um, that's estrogen only we can also give testosterone that way and progesterone is you know given by tablet or it's combined in some patches as well um, Vaginal estrogen is given, well, vaginally, but that's usually a tablet or a pessary um, or a cream. So those are the other ways of giving it. So it's usually a personal preference. For some patients, we would advise a gel, a spray or a patch. Um, and that's because transdermal estrogen tends to give you a more constant level of estrogen. Um, it doesn't aggravate migraines or epileptic seizures um, in the same way as oral can, because oral gives you peaks and troughs. Um, it's also safer from the point of view of the blood clotting risk. So if a patient is at higher risk of a blood clot in the leg, which might break off to the lung, and the risk factors for that can be a family history of it, a personal history, high body mass index, smoker, age is a risk factor. So older women in HRT would probably convert them to transdermal because it doesn't appear to increase the risk of a blood clot in the leg, whereas oral HRT does roughly double it. And that doesn't matter so much in women at very low risk anyway, because doubling very low risk still can be very low risk. But if it's higher risk, then it would be better off with transdermal. Transdermal also at low to moderate doses doesn't increase the risk of stroke, whereas oral does appear to increase the risk of stroke slightly. So in some women, we would prefer to use transdermal or an implant, um, but many women can have either. And some women don't absorb very well through the skin, so they're better off with oral. And if they don't have any contraindications, then we, we could certainly give them oral HRT. Women that have still got a uterus do need progesterone. Um, 
So anybody that's not had a hysterectomy should have progesterone. The only women that have had a hysterectomy that do still need progesterone are women that have had a subtotal hysterectomy. So they've got the cervix left behind. So you can have a little bit of the lining of the womb left there that you need to protect with progesterone. And women that have had severe endometriosis and had their womb removed because of that. So they may have little deposits of endometrium outside the uterus left behind and that can get stimulated by estrogen only. In the last case, which is the endometriosis, then if it's been severe, we should give them continuous combined. So a, a low dose progesterone alongside the estrogen continuously to stop um, stimulating that endometrium. In the women that have had their cervix left behind, we can give them two courses of progesterone. And if they don't bleed with that, then we can assume they don't have any endometrium. Anybody else does need some form of progesterone. You can have it in several forms and it could be tablets. So we get, there's lots of, there's various preparations on the market that have got estrogen tablets for two months and, sorry, for two weeks. And then they've got estrogen and progesterone combined for the last two weeks of the month. The, that's called sequential. So sequentially HRT is when you have only have progesterone for half the month and you have a bleed. And that's generally for women that were still having some periods before they started their HRT. If they've been period free for a year or they're over 54, then they can have continuous um, progesterone, which means they've got a, a lower dose, but they have it every day. So that could be in tablet form. There is a combined patch in the market, you can have it in sequential or continuous combined form. Or what more and more and more what women choose to have is an estrogen only patch or gel or spray and a separate progesterone. And the most common way of giving that is Utrogestan, which is a micronized progesterone, which you take as a tablet, either orally or vaginally. And you can take it sequentially, which is two week, 12 to 14 days of the month, or you can take a smaller dose every day. Um, so, and that actually is really well tolerated, very few side effects. It appears to be probably one of the safest um, progesterones for the breast. It doesn't increase the risk of breast cancer uh, in some studies for up to five years use. Um, so we would choose that in women that are maybe slightly higher risk regarding breast cancer. And the other way of taking it, which is really useful and really popular is a marina coil. So we put a coil inside the uterus. It's also great for women that still need some contraception. Um, it releases a very small amount of progesterone every day great for women that have suffered from heavy bleeding and you just give estrogen separately and that is really a should be a bleed free um, regime because most women don't get any bleeding with that or very very little bleeding Eutrogestan, which is the micronized progesterone it has the advantage of being available on the market separately from um, any other preparation, though there is a new preparation on the market that combines oral 17 um, beta estradiol with eutrogestin in a continuous combined formula. The advantage of eutrogestin is that um, you can use it with a separate estrogen patch, gel or spray. Um, you, can, you, you can make it up your own regime to be continuous combined or sequential. It appears to be safer for the breast for up to five years use. We don't appear to have an increased risk of breast cancer with it. Um, and it's very well tolerated. Uh, it's very few side effects. Um, also, it can be used in women with an increased blood clotting risk because it doesn't appear to increase the risk of blood clot in the leg, even when we use it orally. It can be used orally or vaginally. Um, there is a vaginal preparation that's um, licensed that we often use it in IVF. So it's the pessary that goes in the vagina, but also the lower dose, the 100 milligram dose that we use for continuous combined HRT, the same tablet that's used orally can be used vaginally. So it, it has some advantages with regard to all those aspects. I would say the only thing about Utrogestin is it's probably not quite as good at bleeding control as some of the other oral progesterones or the marina coil. So you'd pick and choose your patients that you use it on. Yes, um, it's now, we, it used to be that we could only use it for four years and have to change it. Now we can use it for up to five years before we change it. It slowly releases progesterone called levonogestrel um, into the uh, cavity of the uh, cavity of the uterus and it, it um, affects the endometrium directly. So you get less 
systemic effects of progesterone. So women get less side effects. There is some systemic release into the bloodstream, but um, less so than other progesterone. So women tend to get less bloated um, symptoms. Um, they tend to get less headaches or breast tenderness, etc. And the great advantage of it is that you can use a separate progesterone. It's really very good at protecting the endometrium from abnormalities and from bleeding. Um, and it's also a contraceptive. So for women that are just perimenopausal, still need some contraception, the marina coil sort of ticks all the boxes. So um, certainly it's, it's a great way of delivering progesterone.